Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, we have been together for nine months every single night, and we're always highlighting the why, and we have been preaching the fact that 2022 is going to be a smacking for the Democrats because they've gone too far left. They always overreach when they think they can, and they always get smacked. They get their hand caught in the cookie jar. And what we're going to cover tonight is an article from the Washington Post. It's an opinion piece, and they are warning each other. The Democrats at the Washington Post, the author of this column, is a Democrat. They are warning other Democrats because what have we always said? They use these opinion pieces, these editorials. They use these articles to communicate with each other. This is something that the intelligentsia reads. Oh, did you see the article from the Washington Post? That's a great talking point as they sip their brandy and they look down on us plebeians. Now, there's some incredible correlations to 1960s politics in America. This is incredible. And they're warning that the same thing is going to happen. Listen to the parallels. I want to hear what you guys think. It's linked in the description box below. This is a huge one, guys. You got to read this because this is incredibly important. Now, let's dive in, share this out, and let me know what you think. Opinion. Democrats seem to forget that LBJ's great society was a gift to the GOP. LBJ, Democratic president, far left, buy everything, give money to everyone, tax everybody. It was just money everywhere. Listen to this. This is, this is so poignant. 51 years ago, a book by two centrist Democrats caused a commotion among their party's progressives who represented councils of restraint. Hey, let's translate that back to now. Biden, full-on progressive. Far left is running the Democratic Party and this administration. Everyone knows it. Joe Manchin, council of restraint, and they get pissed at him, right? Direct parallel. In The Real Majority, which is the book that was released by Richard M. Scammon and Ben J. Wattenberg, highlighted a Gallup poll question from February of 1968. Quote, is there any area around here that is within a mile where you would be afraid to walk alone at night? The yes response, men 19% and women 50%. Now, women 50% should remind you of something else that we've talked about, and that's what really piqued my interest, and we're going to dive into that because the author does the same thing. But does that sound familiar with all the crime and the crime waves that are going through all the cities and all of our communities? Does that sound familiar? It's the same thing that's happened before. There's nothing new under the sun. But listen to what happened before. Half of the United States husbands had wives who were afraid to go out at night. Beginning in 1968, the same year that Gallup poll was questioned, Republicans won five of the next six presidential elections. That's crazy. But listen to it. It goes even further and it draws the parallels, which we're going at right here. It was really cool to see. Last week, the National Firearms Survey revealed that since the beginning of 2019, almost half of those buying their first gun were women. 3.5 3.5 million of them. No wonder progressives came close to re-electing Donald Trump with three words, defund the police. Okay, the defund the police thing, that's pretty obvious. We've covered that extensively. But the 50% of new gun owners were women. That's just like the 50% who said they were afraid to go out at night. The common theme between those things and 50 years is it's a security issue. The only difference is cultural differences on how they handle it. Back then, it was a different situation, and now it's self-reliance. Women are taking guns in their own hands. Same root issue, but let's keep going because this is important. Campaigning in 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson, standing on top, yes, on top of the presidential limousine, bellowed through a bullhorn. Quote, we're in favor of a lot of things and we're against mighty few. Does that sound familiar to now? Everything is good, except if you're on the right. That's exactly what's happening now. Wielding a 155-seat Democratic House majority, Johnson revived the New Deal project of swaddling Americans in a blanket of federal programs. That is exactly what's happening now. Biden is just printing money, handing money out all over the place. You don't need a job because the government will hand you money. Exactly what's happened then is happening now. The parallels are staggering. It goes even further. Today, Democrats are ignoring Thomas Jefferson's warning against large undertakings based on slender majorities. What this author is saying is, hey guys, you're going after the far left ideals, but you are leaving the Democratic base behind. That's what that means. They seem entirely committed to progressivism's equality aspiration. This is not equality of opportunity, which produces disparate outcomes that are intolerable because they're presumptively results of systemic racism. Perfectly worded. 
Rather, the up-to-date equality aspiration is equal dependence on an ever-larger majority on federal guarantees of material well-being. That is exactly what's happening right now. Printing money. You don't need a job. The government will take care of you. Look what happened to them. In the 1966 elections, two years of Democratic exuberance cost them 47 House seats. If the 2022 elections subtract either four Democratic House seats or one Democratic Senate seat, this presidential term will be an extinct volcano, and that is the warning right there. They are drawing correlations to the past from the exact same behaviors to now present day. And what we're going to see is they are going to get smoked, and they're warning each other. This is the time to get active, guys. This is the time to pour it on because we can take this from a we barely took it to we took it so far that we actually have a veto-proof majority. It is possible. And even the Washington Post sees it on the wall. That's what I have for you guys. Let me know what you think, and I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. slot. I'm Braden, signing out.